It's time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. Your music has a vibratory quality to it. I mean, that's what I, I heard in listening to it. It's, it's that it's, it's, it's got a rhythm to it. It's got a tone to it. It's a very vibrant um, oh, experience, if you will. And that's the piece that I think is interesting uh, beyond just what the words say. Again, it could be Sanskrit. It could be a word I don't know. I mean, oftentimes I like that kind of music. Is it's in a different language? I don't know what the heck they're saying. But that's not what I'm listening to. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Yeah. No. It's all about frequency. And that's it. Um, and so the different songs on the album. The one I sent you guys is very upbeat and lively. But there's other ones because each song on the album is actually designed to really tap into a different what we call archetype of being and particularly of the feminine. So there's some archetypes that are really like and as an example the great mother would be one archetype so the music is designed to feel more comforting and nurturing kind of you know womb like which is very different than say um, the archetype of the queen of death which is the sweet you know kiss between life and death and so how can we in frequency in sound give an experience where people can enter into these very different states of being and even connect with parts of ourselves that may be a little bit dormant beneath the surface. And as you were just saying, Freeman, that's what I was starting to experience in India and, and why I ended up going on to study sound healing was because I noticed that I don't know what these words mean, but especially a lot of the, the more mantric uh, chants and songs in, in languages that are are older where they've been using them for so long it's it's almost like you tap into a field of people who've been chanting these same chants over the years mm. but also the the even singing them creates vibration in your own body as you sing and that vibration itself begins to open you up to a different state of consciousness a different place in your beingness and it it helps us it really for me it's way easier to allow that frequency to open my being and, and then I don't have to try so hard to get there on my own. I love that. I mean, so. you're, you're um, putting a perspective, a, a very particular perspective on an experience that, um, that we have been trying for a very long time to uh, wrap our uh, arms around. Um, put it another way, I have uh, I've had the pleasure of, of watching you perform a, a few times now, and I notice, for one, that you um, allow yourself to be transported in a full-body way. You experience it. You experience um, the expression of your music completely with your body. There's this wonderful kind of swaying. That's the, and, uh, my experience of it is that there is a completely different intelligence that's awakened, that's not mental. Yeah. And um, well, I don't have language for it out of my own experience. It's I, very, I, very much new ground for me to, to, to begin to identify that place in me as well. And for some, it's accessed through music and through sound. And um, for others who are not particularly auditory, it may be a visual connection or a kinesthetic connection or some other relationship with some other kinds of intelligence that is so cre that is creative in ways that we have not understood in our conditioning. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And and, and, and even uh, what you said about that I don't have to try so hard. I right. mean that that to me the the minute you say that it's like I it's can feel emotionally a sense of relief. Because yeah. look, I spent my whole life trying really hard. I mean, when you're talking you about try really hard. no, I mean, you're talking about in high school how all these people you wanted to impress. I mean, that's such an honest statement. Thank you if for that. We do. We we and all try so hard, hard to I, fit ourselves into um, uh, the square, the round hole, and the square peg thing. Or, or do I have and that, it's not even so. ours. It's or it's dads it's, or it's grandpas dads. or moms that's, or whoever. That's a big part of it too. Is just being good enough. You know, am I a good enough singer? Am I smart enough? Am I pretty enough? Am I thin enough? You know, there's, oh, there's some enough. It's excruciating. It's really painful. It's yeah. excruciating. Really painful. And so for me, as you were talking about Barnett, what's that quality that happens? The word that comes to me is transmission. Oh. Like we, and this is not something that's you know about just me. It's it's really something that we all have 
it's like plugging uh, plugging ourselves into a light socket yes. and then we are just the instrument and we're available for this transmission to move through and when i really get into it in a long show after we've been you know singing back and forth it's a relationship between me and my musicians and the audience we're all we're praying together basically we're we're it's a it's a singing prayer and yes. it's really not about the performance it's about can we all open to a transmission of something larger um, moving through us. Can we collectively plug ourselves into this light socket and allow ourselves to be lit up? It's what, the, you, it's what you said earlier. You it's said what I'm you're being saying sung. now. Well, no, I know, but she also said earlier, being sung by it. Like, yes. the language of being sung, yeah. personally sung, I by don't something that's coming through you. I don't you. want to step on uh, what's coming through you right now <laughs> as you as you speak this, Dave. Um, I have... Uh, little goosebumps because yeah. I am tapping into what you are referring to as a transmission that you're expressing right now in this enthusiasm and in this excitement, this this love affair with the process that underlies the form that it's mm. you know it's it's not about the form. The form is the dance or the song, but there's something in your communication right now. And it's it's a gift. It's generous. It's generous it's an offering. It is, it is the tapping into the to the mystery. It is the mm. tapping into the joy that many call passion. And I can hear your passion as you speak it right now. To me, that's that's the gift of any artist, and whether it's expressed in the in the fine arts of life or if it's expressed in the livingry of life, in, in one who can live their life, his or her life, as a work of art. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's so perfect that you said that, Barnett, because literally I have a journal that I created a couple years ago, and I, and I decorated it, and I cho chose one phrase that wanted to be my phrase to live by for that year, and the phrase was, my life is a work of art. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, it's a tall order for any of us to have that I can't necessarily say. <laughs> No, but that's it. I mean, that's, you know, you, what you're touching upon is, is the opportunity for each person to step into, to allow themselves, and the language we've used in the past is to discover and to be discovered by, to sing and be sung by, yeah. something that we just, you know, it's the, when you were talking earlier about the qualities in the archetypes, in other words, the good mother, I, you didn't use that language, but I'm going to use that language, the good mother, there's mm -hmm. a quality in that that we want to tap into in a very intentional way. Right. And they're, they're resources, you know, in the Indian tradition, uh, American Indian, the Native American tradition, these ideas of the, that, that we're standing on the on the uh, shoulders of our grandfather, our fathers and our grandfathers, uh, or, or mo mothers and our grandmothers, and that there's this whole, you know, this this whole rich backdrop with which we can we can reference. You you, you said it earlier when you said you said about the mantras is that yeah. you, you realize that this is century old tradition and ceremony, and so it's almost like you're standing on the you know, the shoulders, if you will, of all of those people who came in search of what you're talking about, that thing to find the art, you know, yeah. that, that personal expression in our own lives. Yeah, actually, I mean, as you're speaking that too, one of my intentions was really, um, you know, the, the album is actually the centerpiece of my doctoral dissertation. I'm, I'm getting a doctorate in ministry right now. I'm going to have and, to call you Doc. <laughs> yeah, eventually, you're going to have to call me Reverend Doctor. I, so <laughs> you well, that's can't, good. So because, you can't uh, prescribe, I take it. <laughs> yes. She can. She, but, it's, but what it's, I was it's, wanting to do was like say, okay, you know, I'm part of a, a, a living tradition uh, around women's spirituality. How do I take these 13 different archetypes that we normally explore in a year? We normally take a whole year and, and spend one month on each of these archetypes of the feminine. Beautiful. And there's a very, you know, small number of people who are going to be willing to dive that deeply. But how could I transmit the frequency to give people an opportunity if they listen to the CD over and over to tap into all these different parts in one brief song how can i take you know what originally was a whole year-long study of one of these faces of the feminine and put it into one song that at least gives people a little taste of the good mother or of the energy of compassion as an example or the wild fiery volcanic energy of like pele who's a 
goddess of um, the volcanoes in Hawaii, (laughs) or Aphrodite, who's very sexual and is about liberating that side of ourselves that's not about being a good girl, but that's really wild and, you know, wants wants pleasure, desires pleasure. So for me, even in creating the album, it was a real stretch to even go into parts of myself that I'm not as deeply comfortable with and then allow myself to transmit from that archetype drawing both myself and other people in to experience these different parts of ourselves so it was a real uh, Mm. spiritual process just putting the album together and seeing how can i transmit a whole archetype through you know a brief five to seven minute song that um the gift of passionate creativity is that uh the passionate creators um, are able to, I'll use your word, to transmit to the rest of us an experience, an excitation, um, um, with defer- all deference to the Beach Boys. An a, arousal. An arousal, a good vibration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it is the gift of, crea- of passionate creativity to allow the rest of us to have an experience of passion. And it kind of is, um, it's like a true north. Uh, it's like a magnetic heading. And when we taste it, when we experience it, we have a referent for it. And maybe we can uh, find our way for ourselves to that same trailhead. <laughs>